Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Dixon, Medical Director for the Montgomery County Hospital District EMS Service in Southeast Texas. I'm here this afternoon with Misty Willingham, our Public Information Officer, and Misty's going to give me some questions to answer that we've seen come up recurrently on our social media uh, page. Uh, this is an effort to kind of give you the, the most up-to-date information that our team here at MCHD uh, has for our community. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Dixon. Um, so a lot of people are asking us on our Facebook page, why aren't we sharing more information regarding our patients? Right. So in all healthcare, and the hospital district is, is part of the greater, larger healthcare sister system, which includes hospitals and clinics, and myself as a clinician, we can't share public health information or PHI. Um, so we can give uh, general information, but it couldn't be anything that could be used to potentially to either directly identify or potentially identify one of our patients. Uh, I think that that sometimes I would apply the same golden rule standard to to folks. I in the community we want to know things, but also I, I as a patient would want my private health information kept confidential by my caregivers. Okay, thank you so much. Um, a lot of people are asking if COVID-19 is so rampant in the community, why don't we just test everybody? It's a great question. I think we would love to test everybody so we'd know where this thing was going. Uh, understand that the, the landscape has changed. They call it COVID-19 because we didn't really discover this subtype of the coronavirus until late in 2019. So it's very, very new. And the reason we don't test everybody is we simply don't have the resources to test everybody. Right now, we are ramping up on getting those resources here to Montgomery County. And so we are, are, are ramping up the testing, but we're testing uh, our healthcare professionals and the sickest patients first. Uh, so we have to, uh, the, the, some of the resources are scarce right now. I expect that to change in the future. But for right now, we have to try to keep the people healthy who are taking care of us and tend to the sickest uh, patients out there first. Okay, thank you so much. So how many people are being tested? Can we tell people that? Yeah, I mean, sure. I, I think that there are, you know, I, I think that's a moving number, Misty, because it changes every day. I will tell you, uh, the health department, you know, we are transparent with how many people we have under investigation. That means how many people we've tested. Uh, I think, so there's, there's, it's, it's a twofold question. So the public health department for Montgomery County, we know how many that we as a service have tested, um, but that number, and that number is fairly small, it's less than 100. That being said, there are four big hospital systems and six major hospitals in Montgomery County. They do not have to report every time they send a test to the COVID-19. They are by law required to report the positives to us. So the number of total tests in the community done by private doctors, sent to labs, and hospitals is a number we don't really know right now. I would imagine that now we're less than 100 countywide. We're probably in the hundreds of tests, the low hundreds right now is my, my guess right now. Okay, so if I'm a community member and I believe I'm having symptoms of COVID-19, where what should I do? Um, sh where can I go to get tested? So the, the first thing I would tell people as a, a clinician, I've been a clinician over 20 years, is that we've all had the flu before. We've all had a cold and the flu. So my first advice is if you're feeling well in yourself uh, and you have a little fever and cough, but you're not severely short of breath, you're getting along okay, you're not bomb, you're eating and drinking, be able to hydrate yourself. If you don't have any pre-existing medical conditions, you don't need to seek help. You need to drink plenty of fluids, treat it like the flu, uh, take uh, ibuprofen or Tylenol or some type of fever medication so you'll feel better and see how you go for a few days. Typically, I don't tell friends and family to seek medical attention unless they have those severe characteristics or they're a person at risk, i.e. they have underlying uh, health problems like diabetes or some type of renal disease. Uh, some type of immunosuppression or you're on immunosuppressants uh, that may modify how your body fights infections because most illnesses and as well the COVID are uh, self-limiting illnesses. These illnesses are ju essentially just like the flu 
and we'll kind of get into how the COVID is a little bit different, a little bit more serious than the flu. But I think essentially the initial in the flu season, um, you should treat this just like any other flu. Okay, so why are there some people in the hospitals that are in critical condition? All right, that's a great question. That's what scares us about this one is, uh, is, is this another just run of the mill seasonal flu? None of them are. When you think about the, the, the different uh, series of the flu or all these viruses can change year to year a little bit, little subtype mutations. So they're a little bit different than we saw last year. The coronavirus uh, is generally not a harmful virus. It's a cold virus. It's been there and well-known, well-characterized for a number of years. Uh, but when they mutate a little bit, uh, as this one, the COVID-19 has, they can be more virulent. Uh, that means that they can do us more harm. So the, this particular one, and we haven't characterized the exact reasons why, but it seems to affect a, a small number of people uh, more severely than others. And generally these people are, are who we would expect to have uh, complications, just like the flu. So the older you get, the more likely you are to have a complication or a bad pneumonia. And underlying things that I talked about with immunosuppression and chronic kidney disease and diabetes and things like that. So if you get diagnosed with um, COVID-19 and you're really sick, how long does this illness take? Um, how long will it take for you to recover? So the, the kind of the numbers that are out there is the once you get infection, i.e., and we could talk about how you get infection and protect yourself from infection, is this is a droplet. It's not flying around in the air trying to get us. When we sneeze, and I sneeze, and it would be on my coffee cup here and on my desk, uh, and if I touched that and then I ate lunch and I would bring my hand to my mouth or I would shake hands with Misty and then she would eat lunch without washing her hands, she could potentially have some of the virus in her upper airway and digestive system that would move down into her respiratory system. So that's kind of how that's kind of how this thing is is transmitted. Um, you know, the vast majority of people get a self-limiting illness, which is about a, a two to four week illness, uh, all from the time they get infected until the time they completely recover. About two weeks, two to maybe four weeks. The four to six weeks are people that get lower respiratory disease or a little bit sicker. A pneumonia, a viral pneumonia, and that's where it goes from just a cough to higher fevers and difficulty breathing where it moves down into the lungs. So another question um, that the community has is they've seen our EMS crews and they're all dolled up in the PPE that we have to wear to keep them safe. So can you talk about what PPE is? Sure. And why they have to wear it? Sure. So, Misty, PPE is personal protective equipment, and I know that it is uh, unsettling uh, for people who are off to the Walmart or something, and they see us dressed up like spacemen or something, and then you see the national news and people are in these really high-level respirators. I want to reassure everyone, we, we don't know everything about this virus, but what we do know is it's droplet spread, predominantly droplet spread. What does that mean? That means, as I said before, when I... Uh, how does, how's it spread? When I sneeze and I sneeze, droplets go all over my coffee cup, all over my desk. Those can live outside the body for up to a couple of days. It's mainly spread because after I sneeze, I would grab something and have it on my hands and then we would finish this interview and shake hands or embrace or something and then it would be on you. And that you would go before you went to have your afternoon snack you wouldn't wash your hands, you would eat, and that's how it gets, that's how it's, it's person to person kind of spread through these droplets. So why do we have the PPE? Because people, when they're sick, sneeze, and they sneeze in themselves, and so they potentially have these air, these uh, droplets all over them. So we wear a gown, so we keep, when we take care of patients and look after them, and we make contact with them, the virus may be shed, and we want it to be on the gown or on the uh, mask. Uh, and the, certainly the gloves. And so that's why you see us in this, this equipment. It's not because it's, it's rushing through the air trying to, you know, it's going to waft into your nose. That's not the case at all. Uh, so uh, as um, lots of the elected officials have said and lots of Dr. Fauci and people on TV, how do we prevent this? The most important thing is good, good hand washing, right? So wash yourself, sing the birthday song, warm soapy water, um, hand sanitizer will, will kill this stuff. 
is the number one thing that we can do is just good health habits. And then uh, the social distancing, just be careful, uh, at least in the near term, while there's, it's in the community, about person-to-person -person transmission. So how close we are and how many uh, times we're in big crowds. So what would be your advice now for people in Montgomery County? Should we all be staying in our homes? Should we hunker down? Should we go to restaurants? So I, I think the best advice, and I think that I would follow Dr. Fauci. I think he's spot on in some of the, the researchers that, that do this. Uh, I'm an emergency physician uh, and uh, emergency EMS physician uh, by training in my career. Uh, but all the immunologists, all the epidemiologists have, have told us of this, this curve. And so what we're trying to do with the COVID-19 is kind of flatten that out. What does that mean? That means if we took, say we have a thousand cases in Montgomery County, we're gonna get a thousand cases of transmission no matter what we do. That thousand cases is much more difficult for us to manage if the curve looks like a very steep slope, i.e. if all those cases present to my service here, my EMS service, and to our hospitals in the area within a two week period, those thousand patients are very difficult to, and a strain on the, on the healthcare system. What Dr. Fauci and some of the elected officials are doing to this social distancing, what does that mean? That means the farther we are away and the less we congregate in big groups, the transmission rate, it's lower. So it's slower. So it's, you, you may still get those same thousand cases, Misty, but those cases, if they're spanned out between now and July or August or September or even, right? The longer that we span those same thousand cases, we flatten that curve and it makes it much more manageable for the healthcare system to deal with as a whole. Okay, thank you so much. And then a lot of people just wanna know, like, what's up with the toilet paper? The toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, the toilet paper, I think that this, uh, we, we do have some, some young, uh, the one-off, I would call it. I'm not sure because uh, of the exact numbers of young people that are gonna be affected. I, I do know a couple things, that there's no, there's no deaths in U the US that are known to me of kids less than 10, so our younger, younger kids seem to be less infect affected. Uh, but people are worried, right? This is, this is worrisome. When we see the one-off or, or the occasional young, healthy person be affected, but understand, I had a conversation with my son who had lost a classmate to the influenza who was a, a healthy teenager. All viruses can do that. Uh, does the COVID has a little bit more uh, uh, risk than the average flu? That's clear to us. But I think it worries people. And as people get worried, uh, I think they tend to to go out and want to stock up and be ready for something. Uh, I want to reassure everybody this is not a diarrheal illness. Uh, so you're probably fine with your normal stores of toilet paper at home. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. You're welcome, Misty. Thank you.